So if we look at the background, I mean, obviously it's a very common injury and uh, typically results, as I said, from a non-contact event in a previously healthy individual. To give you some context, sort of between 2000 and 2015, 200,000 reconstructions were performed in this country. Okay, and a ratio of seven to three. So 70% males, 30% female. And in terms of the economic cost, so I've got figures for 2014 to 15, we're talking about a cost to the taxpayer of $142 million. So this is a significant uh, economic burden. And yes, we're all going on about COVID-19 at the moment because we're in the middle of a pandemic, but you know, these are kind of like pandemic proportions as well. The annual growth at the moment in terms of injury rates is around 9% for males and 8% for females. And five to 6% of those per year in both sexes are probably largely prevented by good neuromuscular agility training. So in terms of prevention, what are we doing? So, I mean, the mainstay of prevention in terms of pivoting sports are neuromuscular training programs. Now their role, several studies now found that neuromuscular agility and proprioceptive training programs are effective, you know, as pre preventative measures and can avert an ACL injury in up to 80% of cases, 50 to 80% of ACL injuries. It's probably not as high as that. I'd probably say it's more like 50, but nevertheless, it's, a, it's a, an important preventative uh, factor. Uh, most neuromuscular training programs, their emphasis is to improve strength, flexibility, uh, neuromuscular control, uh, balance and coordination. And uh, the one I've been heavily involved with over the years is the FIFA 11 Plus, which is used in football. Um, and this basically is a series of exercises. Sorry, that picture's not particularly big, but basically it's a series of exercises that are performed um, over a, a 30 minute period. Uh, first, first session is a bit of low, low grade running and a bit of stretching, active stretching. The second bit is a set of exercises that focus on core and leg strength, balance and plyometrics, agility and so on. And then finally, some more running exercises at a more higher intensity that involve cutting and pivoting. And this kind of program has been adopted by Australian Rules Football. Um, as well as uh, netball. So it's something that is being uh, utilised on a, on a regular basis. So look, it doesn't prevent all ACL injuries and it has to be sports specific, hence the reason why footy and, um, and netball have their own programmes. I guess the key challenge is to get your coaches and your parents, these young athletes, to buy in. Um, but I guess one of the big factors that I would like to put put over to you is that these neuromuscular training programs not only prevent injury, but they actually improve performance as well. So I think that's probably the as aspect to come from. So, you know, performance parameters such as speed, agility, vertical jump, uh, abdominal strength tests, um, you know, estimated maximal aerobic capacity, uh, they're all improved um, by these types of training programs. So, you know, we need to make time um, I'm sort of sort of preaching here, but we need everyone, player, coach and parents to buy into, you know, the performance enhancement effects of these programs. You know, if time is an issue for the coach, get the players to do it independently before training commences or simply address the training sessions to add these programs into a planned session. You know, all it takes, as I said, is an extra 30 minutes uh, per session um, and everyone will reap the rewards with uh, lowering the rewards.